Welcome to my session. It is uh, using Event Kit in iOS. It is a beginner to intermediate uh, session. So if anyone has done uh, the iOS workshop yesterday, anyone? Yep, you're in the right spot. So this is a perfect place to be. It is not a hard framework to use, but it's an awesome framework, and it should be in any app that uses events. And not many people use it, and I don't know why, and I, I think you should. Um, but today, I hope everyone's been enjoying DevWorld and the session so far. Uh, I wanted to have a bit more fun and actually make this like a code long uh, workshop. So if you've got a laptop, bring it out. Uh, if you've got Xcode, make sure, make sure it's primed and ready to go. Uh, my name's Neil. I'm from Victoria University. And uh, that's my Twitter handle. If you want to heckle me, please do it online and not to my face. <laughs> All right. Uh, what is EventKit, you all ask? Uh, a few people hadn't heard of EventKit um, that I've spoken to at the conference. Um, basically, it's uh, a framework uh, provided by Apple so you can integrate with the uh, user's uh, iPhone uh, calendar. It lets you create and read and update and delete events and uh, all that coolness. And here's how I'm using it in uh, the Victoria University app. Uh, basically, we have a server which serves our events. Uh, we download them, let the user click on one of the events, and if, they want, if they're interested in the event, they can actually hit Add to My Calendar, and it inserts it to the user's calendar, which is, I think, kind of cool, because integration is cool. Uh, but I mean, you don't have to use it that way. You could also use it uh, if you had another university app to uh, maybe sync a student's timetable. Uh, that could be a cool, cool use. Or maybe you have a, a careers counselor and you want to uh, negotiate meeting times. Um, you can actually look up the calendar information to find out uh, what, what times are available and then suggest times based on that. So you can make something like that's kind of intelligent, which I think you know, is a cool, cool use. So let's jump straight in. Uh, I'm not going to beat around the bush. Uh, the only thing you need to know uh, when using Event Kit, it is a very simple framework, is, uh, is the event store. And the event store looks something like this. It's where you buy uh, all your events. Thank you for those few laughs. They're, that's my only joke, so uh, <laughs> I won't, I won't uh, do that again. Uh, the event store is actually more like a database. And because it's a database, uh, you can use it to query events, delete events, and insert events. Uh, it's called the EK Event Store. And like most Apple frameworks, that's the prefix uh, that I'm going to use. So if I say event store, I actually mean to say EK Event Store. Uh, and here is how you could use it to query it. So you use an NS predicate. Uh, if you've never uh, heard of an NS predicate before, it's just kind of like a, like a SQL statement. You just define some properties that you want to search on, and it can pull back an array of events. And it's that simple. So uh, here we go, five lines of code. And you can get all the users' upcoming events from the calendar, which is pretty nice. Um, the predicate, as you can see there, uh, you defined a start date, uh, an end date, and a list of calendars. And you might notice that your calendar in iCal is actually made up of lots of calendars. You've got your home calendar, your work calendar, and there's a birthdays calendar. And calendars within calendars, I kind of think that's inception. Uh, not really. Uh, the, there is a one-to-many uh, one method with, uh, with calendars and events. So an event has to belong to a calendar. A calendar can have multiple events. It's just something to be aware of. And it kind of changes our diagram to look a bit more like this. The event store is actually made up of lots of little calendars. Some calendars are read-only, so any calendars that you subscribe to, such as the birthdays calendar. Uh, you can't actually write events to, but it's just something to be aware of, uh, but it's not that important. And if you're watching the video uh, later on, uh, here's some code you might want to try out. And there is uh, quite a few code slides in this. I'm just going to uh, flip right through them, and you can watch the video later and hit pause and, and see what they're all about. OK, so when I started writing this presentation, I thought, this will be really cool. We can, we can do stuff with the simulator and, and, and give the presentation. And I realized there's actually no calendar on, on the simulator. And, um, but like I said, uh, you can read events from it. And uh, here's a little sample code I wrote for, um, for reading events uh, from the simulator. So there's no actual calendar, but you can probably download an app which is uh, already use an event kit to, to read your events and, and practice. And you will need something like this if you're doing anything that writes for events and you're using just a simulator. It's better to do it on the device. Um, and this is, uh, this is just one that will uh, use that, that code I um, showed you before. It will just query all the events in the database and uh, display them in a list. And uh, if you click on them, it'll just do a nice little countdown. 
And this is on GitHub, so if you want this code, uh, you can use it. Um, I'm going to use it uh, when we do the coding later on, uh, just because there's no actual calendar. All right. So, how did I create those events in the simulator if there's no calendar uh, in the simulator? So, the simulator doesn't have the calendar app, but you can still use Event Kit and you can still write to it and read from it. And this is how I did it. And like I keep saying, Event Kit is really simple. I don't know why people don't use it more often. Uh, I, I get a reference to the Magical Event Store. I create a new event. I fill in all the default uh, values that you would see normally in your calendar, and then I save it, save it back. So. Uh, there's nothing really tricky there except possibly the, the dates. You have to use NS dates. Uh, you can't use strings or, or integers. Um, and if you've ever used NS dates, they can be um, tricky the very first time you use them. Uh, like I said, I don't want to make this a code talk. Oh, well, we will be, we will be um, doing some code, uh, but I don't, I don't like looking at code slides. Uh, and this is actually how you would do it with NS date from a string, and it's just there for reference if you're watching the video. Okay, and the very last thing I'm going to talk about is event kit UI. Uh, event Kit is actually split into uh, to two parts. You've got Event Kit and Event Kit UI. They're two different frameworks. Uh, Apple make it really easy to use their interfaces. So you kind of don't really want to redesign all their interfaces again because it's going to be a lot of work and you kind of want to make it work how the default calendar works anyway. So you'll be using Event Kit UI most of the time when you're inserting an event into a user's calendar. Uh, and again, uh, they make it simple. I'll skip over this. And there is a delegate, again, for reference. Uh, but let's build something. Uh, so if you've got laptops, is anyone going to code along? Yay! <laughs> okay, cool. So what we're going to do is we're going to download some events from the internet. We're going to display them in a table view. And then we're going to let the user tap on one of the events and then insert it into their calendar. Sounds pretty cool. Uh, the way I want to do it is uh, via JSON. And because there's no JSON framework by default on iOS 4, uh, we will have to download some, some uh, JSON code if you want to try this. So uh, type that into your uh, terminal uh, now. Um, I'm going to do it too. So uh, let, let's jump around. So let's launch terminal. And I'll make this full screen. First thing I'm going to do is check this out because uh, I'm a little uh, uh, worried that if everyone downloads at once, it will uh, go a bit slow. And cool, it's pretty lightweight. This is actually a, re a really nice framework, um, especially because we'll be working with NSDATA. So uh, with that downloaded, most of you should have it by now, uh, we're going to jump over to uh, Xcode. Was it too fast? Sorry. Uh, does anyone need the uh, the slide back up? What do we download from the site? Uh, the JSON framework. So, yeah. Look, I'll, look. I'll go. I'll do it again. Uh, yeah. Please stop me if I'm going too fast. I do tend to talk a bit fast. So if we go uh, over to uh, GitHub, and the framework is rather popular. It is this one. And you should all have Git on your machines because uh, uh, it comes with Xcode 4. OK, and then uh, back in Terminal, uh, I'm just going to delete the one I just downloaded. Uh, and I'm just going to type git clone and then the URL, which is uh, github slash dig slash json framework. And that will drop a package um, on your desktop uh, with the framework right there. OK, so with that hopefully downloaded by everyone, uh, we can jump back to Xcode. Um, actually, sorry, I should show you this while, I've got, while I had uh, Safari open, is I set up a server on Heroku uh, called Events Feed. And this is going to be our, our internet source from where we're going to get our events from. Again, I've, I've put this on, um, on GitHub as well, so you can actually download this app. It's a Rails app and, and try it locally. OK, and as you can see, it's very simple. All it is is it lists some events that are coming up in Melbourne. Uh, we can modify 
uh, event. Uh, should be fun. Uh, and update that. Or we can create a new event. I've only put in some basic fields. Uh, well, we have the Dev World uh, dinner coming up tonight. It is on at 6.30. Uh, it should go this way, and it goes it goes to late, and it is downstairs in the marquee and uh, cool dinner uh, eating food. Okay, we'll create that event. So what this is doing is I've set up. If you put dot uh, JSON on into this URL, uh, it's it's uh, showing a JSON. Uh, Object and you should all know what JSON is. Hopefully, uh, yes. The question. Um, what did you type in terminal? T what did I type in terminal? Uh, sorry, I do go a bit far. So, all I did is I checked out the project from GitHub. Uh, so I was just typed in git clone and then the URL for where this JSON framework is. So because I've set up a web, web application uh, which is serving JSON, uh, when it comes down, uh, we need to consume it in JSON. Uh, and which I wanted everyone to do this now, even though we're not going to need it straight away, just because you know of network issues. So, so what do we do with the thing we uh, I'll get to that right now. Yep. So uh, so now we know where our events are coming from. It's quite simple. Uh, this is our our internet service. Uh, I'm going to jump into Xcode, and I'm going to create a new app, a new project. And we'll make this a navigation-based project. And we can call it whatever you want. Uh, I'm going to call mine uh, event kit demo. And I'll just chuck this on the desktop as well. OK. So the very first things we're going to do is actually include the uh, event kit framework. So if you go into build phases, uh, you'll have link uh, binaries, and we're going to hit plus. And if you type in event, we have the event kit and event kit UI frameworks. We'll need both of them, so we're just going to add those in. And let's add in what uh, we downloaded before. So I'm just going to go to file, uh, add new files, and here is the JSON framework. We just need we need all these classes, so I'm just going to hit uh, add on that. And just to be nice, I'm going to rename this to JSON Framework. Cool. So now we have our raw uh, template. We should come over here to the root view controller. And I'm just going to import the, uh, the frameworks. Uh, .h. And the same for event kit uh, UI. And I may as well import the JSON framework that we downloaded. And it's called sbjson.h. OK, so everyone should be around this, this point, hopefully. Uh, and finally, when we do download the events from the server, we're going to store them in an array. And I'm just going to set up a property for that now. Uh, property uh, topic retain ns array star we'll call that events. So I'm not creating IVARs. You don't need to create IVARs in iOS 4. And I think that's awesome. And I don't think people should create IVARs. So I'm just going to leave that out. Uh, it has a nice little warning for me. Uh, yes, of course, I haven't synthesized it. So uh, if everyone has done that, we'll jump over to the root view controller.m. I'm trying not to use uh, shortcuts here. Um, so please remind me if, I, if I'm jumping too fast. And what we want to do is synthesize that property that we've created. And because I didn't declare an IVAR, I'm actually going to declare what the IVAR is uh, called now by uh, assign it to an underscore events um, IVAR. And hopefully that doesn't confuse anyone. All I'm doing is, is making sure it's not named the same. So if I, if I didn't have this, it'll create the events, getters, and setters. Uh, but the implementing IVAR underneath will also have the same name, which I don't think is very nice. So, just going to do it this way. 
All right, so the very first thing we want to do in our view did load is obviously do a network request to download our JSON feed. So we just create a NS URL. Uh, URL with string. And the server was called eventsfeed.heroku.com slash events.json. And like I said, this is a Rails um, project and you can download this on GitHub later. We can use it here now. And now we have our URL. We can create a NS URL request. Call this request. And it is an NS URL request, request with URL, that URL. Okay. Uh, here's something that I want everyone just to type in. It's a comment to do replace this with async code. I'm just going to do a synchronous request to get, it, get, get all the data from the server and pull it down. You should really do this in the background because you don't want to block your interface. Uh, so uh, what are we going to do? It's called an NSURL uh, connection. Uh, send synchronous request using our request. And because I'm evil, I'm not going to handle the response or handle the errors. Like that, you should really handle those. Uh, NS URL connection returns an NS data object, and there we go. So all this does is call off to the server. Um, it pulls it back as a data. If you were to actually run this, it will run really, really slow, uh, just because it's sending a synchronous request, uh, which you should replace if you're ever doing this in production code. In fact, if we have time at the end, I will go back and rewrite this as um, as async code. Actually, that ran not too bad. OK, so now we have the data in, in NS data form. We want to turn it into an array of objects that we can use. So I'm going to use the uh, parser that we uh, included before, our JSON parser. And SB JSON parser alloc. And uh, we, what we'll do is this will parse it into an NS array. And good thing that we set up that uh, array before. We can just say parser uh, object with data, our downloaded data. And of course, because we don't want to uh, forget to release that either. So that, uh, that's pretty simple. Um, I forgot I should actually uh, just come down here and uh, dealloc that array to. So because I assigned it to an underscore variable, um, I access this directly um, just because if you access it through the property, the self.events, uh, it can trigger key value, um, KVO, in, um, if you've set that up. And so just for safety, I always do it uh, directly. But we, I'm happy to have be proven wrong on that. And here I like to set this to nil here in case we run out of memory. That's all right. Uh, that's just habit for me. OK. So coming back up to our view did load, uh, what we've done is we've downloaded the data, we parsed it into an NS array. If we run this, absolutely nothing will happen uh, because we actually haven't told the table how to display these events that we've downloaded. So we'll do that now. So this is just a standard table view. Uh, the number of rows in this table view, uh, we can just use that the size of the array. And the cell for, for it, uh, basically, uh, because we've um, downloaded the array, it, the array is full of uh, NS dictionaries, which is why I like this framework. And so we just go f to the uh, array we have, uh, object at index, uh, index path dot row. OK, uh, so. And I shouldn't rename that event data. OK. So now we can take that event data and take the text label, set the text to be from the dictionary uh, object for key title. OK. Has everyone uh, been able to keep up? No. <laughs> Am I going way too fast? Yeah. Sorry. Um, I'm, I'm used to, uh, to, to, to just, just typing. Um, all this, all this code is available um, on GitHub. I'll show, show, you the, um, show it at the end. And I'm really, really sorry. And 
I had this plan in my head that we'd have this code along session. It'd be really cool. It'd be like jamming, but with code. And uh, but we'll run this anyway. Look, I I, I don't think it, it's um it's bad to watch someone else program, and it, it kind of demystifies any you know notions in your head like oh this could be difficult or not. Uh, I'm pretty lucky that this worked uh, because you know there was a 50% chance that Xcode could have crashed or you know something could have gone wrong. But look. There we go. And look, there's our dev world dinner. So now if we were to click any of these, absolutely nothing will happen because we haven't typed in the event kit code, which is uh, what we'll do right now. So did select row at index path. This, this happens when a, a table row is tapped. And what we want to do is we want to um, insert the, the event data because we pull down an NS dictionary full of data. Um, we insert that into the user's calendar. And we'll do that now. So I will just create a alias to this right now. Event data self same as before. Uh, object uh, at index index path. This index path comes from the is a parameter that's passed in. For anyone who's not familiar with, uh, it's just there. Um, okay, and now we get a reference to the magical ek event store. Uh, event store, and we call ek event store alec init. It's not a singleton, and I should release this here because I don't forget to do it. Okay, so uh, now we have reference to our event store. Uh, we can actually insert a, insert a new event. So I'm just going to create an ek event, and to do that we call or ek event event with event store. So everything needs a reference to the event store. It's actually used quite a lot. It's a little, little annoying because I keep forgetting to include it. Um, okay, so now we have an events object. Obviously, it's quite easy. We just say set the title for the object. We could say hello world, uh, but we kind of really want it to say uh, what, what the event was tapped. So that's our event data. Uh, oops. Uh, object for key title. So this title, uh, th this key actually comes from our JSON data. If I've still got it up, uh, it's a bit hard to read, but there, look, there's a title and there's the value. Um, there's a start date and a value, end date and a value, and so on, and location and etc. So uh, I'll just copy this to make it quicker. Event dot Location, it's very imaginative, the names. Uh, there's notes. Notes are the uh, kind of like the body of, of, of an event. Equals, and I called that notes as well. Uh, it's all pretty simple. The only, only uh, difficult thing to do is the dates because they have to be NS dates. So event dot uh, start date. And I'm going to, I have a field here which is start date. And I, what I'm going to actually do is convert this to an NS date. So I'm just going to put NS uh, date, uh, date since 1970, and then our value, which is a uh, int value. Uh, that goes there. And this one needs to be closed, and no warnings, cool. And I'm just going to copy that for the end date. So like I mentioned in the slides, uh, every event has to be associated to a calendar. The event store will give us a default calendar, even if the user has never opened their, their, um, their calendar before, uh, their iCal before. Uh, there'll still be a default calendar that we can use. So uh, the event store uh, default calendar for new events. Quite simple. And now uh, we've created the event object. We have to save it to the calendar. And to do this, uh, we go back to the event store. And we say save event this event, the event object that we just created. The span is. Um, uh, if it's a recurring event, you might want to say save for this and future events. 
and because I'm evil, I'm going to ignore my errors as well. The error actually here is um, pretty good because the errors that you get are very descriptive if you've done something wrong. Um, in fact, I'll add it in because uh, it's good just to see how it's done. And it's passing a reference to the error. And then if there was an error, we could say if error uh, nslog uh, error and uh, and we'll just do a description. So let's run this. Uh, and it's slow because it's downloading the event data, which is why I should send an async request. And now if I was to click uh, Melbourne Cup, it should have saved it to my calendar. So like I said, we this is why I wrote the countdown app. Come into this. And there it is. And yeah, Melbourne Cup is that far away. So that was, um, that was kind of cool, but we don't really want it just to insert the event straight into the calendar because all of a sudden the users go to the calendar and say, hey, this app just you know, chucked all these events in here without me knowing about it. So I'm going to give the, the user the option to uh, change any of the settings or even switch calendars. So the simulator doesn't show all the calendars, but if you, you could say, I want to put this in my work calendar or my home calendar. So I'm just going to uh, comment out these lines because we don't need these anymore. We're not implicitly saving it. We're going to create a one of the EK event UI views, and this is the EK uh, event, uh, or is it the EK edit event? No, it's EK event edit uh, view controller. Uh, Controller, AK event edit view control. Alec, and uh, so we just got to set three things on the controller. Obviously, we've got to set the event object that we created. Uh, we're going to set the uh, event store because everyone needs to know about the event store, and we need to tell the controller. Uh, uh, we need to set a delegate for the controller. So this is what happens when the user hits cancel or save. We've got to tell it to send a notification back to our, our application. And so I'm just going to set it to self. And I'm going to say uh, self uh, present modal view controller, the controller. We, everyone loves animations. And then we should always be good citizens and release our objects. Uh, it should throw a warning because I've told it uh, this class is going to be the delegate, and I haven't actually implemented the protocol. So I'm just going to jump over here, and this is how you implement a protocol. You just come in here and say ek event edit view delegate. Uh, the delegate uh, has a has a required uh, function that you must um, implement in your code. So I'm just going to jump straight back to the code and put that in. And this gets fired. Uh, event edit view controller, did complete with action. And this gets fired, like I said, when someone hits save or close on, on that window that we're going to present to them. And we'll just tell it to dismiss the window. Uh, dismiss modal view control. And everyone loves animations. So put that on. So let's run this code. Uh, there we go. So now if I want to go to the Camberwell markets, I click that. It pops up the, the view um, controller that we created. It gives us all this for free. We don't have to um, code in any of these views, which I think is uh, fantastic. We can set alarms. Um, and here's all those details that were in there. If I was to hit done, it, it would save it to the user's calendar. If I was to hit cancel, it wouldn't do anything. Uh, you can um, get a list of what, what the user pressed in that, um, in that delegate method. You can, you can find out what exactly it was. And I hit refresh. and there we go. It's coming up this Sunday. So uh, that's it um, for the demo. I'm just going to quickly jump back here. Uh, here's some useful links. This is the programming guide for Event Kit. Uh, there are three, um, three bits of code I showed you. One was that countdown application. The other one was the Rails application, which served up the events. Um, I'll post these slides up on the DevWorld uh, site, I guess. And um, there is the event kit demo, which I just created then. Um, there is a sample project from uh, Apple. 
uh, and it's a bit more detailed. It implements all the protocols, and I wanted to keep this as simple as possible and only show you, you know, just the basics for, for inserting events uh, into an app. Uh, an example is the, the actually the DevWorld app. It shows a timetable of all the upcoming events, and it would be great if you could just tap one and it could insert it, and you could put an alarm on it or something just to say, hey, it's coming up. Um, uh, that's, that's, so that's me. Um, I can go back and modify this code to do async requests if anyone's interested. Uh, but otherwise, if anyone has any questions, I'm happy to fill them. Or if you guys are, are bored and want to give up. Or if you want to just talk about Objective-C coding styles, that, that's fine too. I'm happy to talk about them. I, I'm sorry I did talk too fast. And uh, I was really conscious of time. I didn't want us to, um, to run out of time. But I realize um, I've probably gone under time. Make it asynchronous? All right, let's just do it. I mean, uh, so asynchronous code. There's a lot of code we can we can use um, that's built into um, into the into the frameworks. I, I actually like to use third-party frameworks because they do a really good job. My favorite one is actually J, uh, GTM HTTP Fetcher. So this is one that Google released uh, for fetching code. And basically, we'll give it a request um, to go get some data, and then it'll tell us when it's back, and it'll implement uh, e tags and last modified since and caching and all that stuff. So uh, that's that's pretty awesome because we don't actually have to do anything. So uh, this is SVN. Uh, we come into uh, terminal, we check it out. It's going to take a second. Cool, and that is done. Uh, so what I like about this framework is you only have to implement uh, what you want. So I'm going to add files. Uh, it is on the desktop. Uh, I go to the source. I just want basic um, fetching, st uh, fetching of, of resources. So I'm just going to add these two classes. If I wanted logging, I'd include the logging classes. Just importing them pretty much just gives you uh, all the functionality. I'm going to hit add. Uh, come over to my implementation, uh, and I obviously have to import the frameworks, uh, gtm h 2 e fetcher, and now in our view did load, instead of sending out a data request, uh, instead of doing this, this awful uh, sync request, um, if I just actually go here and copy the code from it, It'll just take me a few seconds. OK, so this is kind of similar to the code we wrote before. We created a URL. We created a request object. We just need this uh, call here, which just says, go fetch the data and tell me when, it's, when, it, when you've got it. Uh, and it, when it's done, it'll send a request to my fetcher finish with data, which is a method that we will implement. So it's exactly this one here. So copy that code and chuck that in there. And I don't care about errors. So, and now that we have the data, we'll just parse it. Uh, there we go. So, uh, in the um, and the parameter changed. So, in our view did load, uh, it will uh, send the request, and when the data's back, it will um, it'll call this method where we will tell it to parse it and put it into our array. And once we've done that, we should actually uh, self dot is it table view reload. Yes. And then we tell the table view, OK, I've got some new data. And uh, we should really um, reload uh, what's here. What something else I will do too is just up here, because we're sending out a request, I'll call it UI uh, application, uh, shared application, which gets our application instance. And I think it's called network activity indicator equals yes. So that, you know the little spinner up the very top of your, um, your, your iPhone? This actually has to be turned on by the programmer. This doesn't just go when, when, when it's sending out data requests. So the programmer turns this on. Uh, we'll create the URL request. We'll, we'll, we'll send, it, send it out. And then once, once the data is down, downloaded and parsed, we'll turn off the spinner. So UI application, shared application, and what's it called? The network indicator equals no. And like, like I said, G uh, GTM HTTP fetcher gives you um, a lot of cool caching kind of stuff. So uh, I'm going to hit build and run. You can see the spinner will start going. It downloaded it. 
it told the table to up update, and there you go. So, pretty simple. So. <laughs> okay.